Hello, hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Khush amdi. Ji aya nu khuyu morik. Pakhair agale di hao chure shumbe washbale o hai the drivers. Guten Morgen. Hola. Bo your PBS. Kai faal hale shama chatore. Alan Masalan marhaba and a very amazing good morning alongside Buna to everybody who's tuned into PTV World and are watching World this morning alongside the very amazing, the very talented. Shiza Hashmi and Shahzad Khan. Hello, Shiza. How are you today? I am doing great, Alhamdulillah. But other than the, you know, occasional uh, cold allergies that we keep yeah. getting, we're doing great, Alhamdulillah. And ladies and gentlemen, it's Monday, and after a very, I don't know, chaotic situation for a yeah. very long time, and yeah. after a very cold weekend as well, it's finally Monday. So the energies are great, and we love being here after. So it's time to rise and shine, wake and bake, get up, and be prepared and be focused about what you wanted to achieve in life. We are getting started with the show, ladies and gentlemen. We do not have top stories today, but there's something very interesting which we need to share oh, yes. and shoot. Okay, so uh, the annual exhibition of Lok Virsa Mela is happening in autumn this year. Exactly. And it has already started. Usually it happens in spring, but this time it's going to be different. So everyone out there, make sure you at least visit. Exactly, and it's on for the next nine days too as well, wow. ladies and gentlemen. If you want a cultural treat, if you want to you know, spoil your taste buds, please make sure that you go over there because the last time when we went to Lok Virsa to cover this festival, hmm. so... You know, there was this representation from each and every province so far okay. as, you know, the handicrafts, you know, people wow. uh, were there too as well. And other than that, the best part is that every province has their own food set up too as well. Wow. For example, so if Balochistan is famous for Sajji, hmm. you know, you can go have Sajji. If, uh, you know, there's this, somebody from Punjab, probably you can have Saag and Paratha too. Oh God, I'm so, sold. <laughs> and it's all organic too as well, so it feels great. Wow. But other than that, there's this public service message which I wanted to share with everybody. And uh, people have been talking about it that, you know, uh, uh, because I think that the, you know, the tariffs or the fares uh, for the tickets which we were getting probably by the traffic police were, were increased. And uh, they made a lot of fuss about it too as well. And I think that it was a great job because of the fact that yesterday was a very unfortunate day. I ha we had to lose our friend just because of the fact that he was so negligent that he didn't actually wear a helmet and was in an accident and died on spot. So uh, we, we love you, you know, all our viewers who are out there. We want you to be safe. We want you to be healthy. So, you know, wearing a helmet is for your own benefit. The traffic police people are actually not going to benefit from you wearing a helmet. It's for your own safety. Please make sure, and I'm emphasizing on it, it is very important because you leave your kids back at home, your wife, your parents, everybody, they, they just love you. And Shiza, exactly what happened was that yesterday when I was there, yeah. so, you know, the family of the guy actually uh, arrived at the, at the spot and all of a sudden, because it was like, it was all on, on the road, the chaos, it was very chaotic, it was very hard to see, so they started crying and yelling and whatnot. And imagine, through my eyes when I was witnessing that, that the pain the family will go through because the departed soul is gone already, mm. but people who... Stay behind are the ones who suffer. Please make sure that you do not let them suffer because they are loved ones. Yeah, the police doesn't want your money, of course. They want your safety. And I'm sorry you had to go through that. And the uh, family as well, I pray for their well-being. Exactly. But ladies and gentlemen, as it is winter, I mean, it is a very happy fact that it is winter. But there's this a sort of a weird fact as well that along with winter comes smog. Yeah. And uh, smog is basically a sort of combination of fog and all the carbon emissions or all the pollutants that you put in the air. That happens while you smoke. You know, that can add as well. Your cars can add as well to the, yeah. you know, the fuel emission, of course. Yeah. And industries and whatnot, so basically all these combine together and make a thick so, sort of fog which stays in the air and, you know, uh, it sort of uh, limits your visibility as well. Exactly. And it's very bad, especially when you're traveling, even if, if it's, uh, you know, if you're not traveling, even if you're at your home and you're sort of witnessing it and experiencing it, it's bad for your health, you know your what? lungs. Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to add, that smoke is mm. not just about visibility, yeah. it's about things which we cannot see, probably, you know, the inner self of, uh, of, of our body. Because, you know, we, we inhale all of those yeah. pollutants too as well. And even other than smoke, I think that the air is, we have polluted the air so much yeah. that we're not even breathing in fresh air. True. So I think these are the questions which we'll be asking how to maintain our lifestyle, probably in winters too as well, because there's a lot of vitamin deficiencies in yeah. winters. We are lucky now that we have even been joined by a nutritionist too as well. So this is what we are talking about. All you can do is that you can probably write to us on our Facebook page, which is with the name of World This Morning. And we will be asking your questions from our very apt guests and the doctors over here in the house, in the studios with us, ready to answer all our questions. So on my right hand side, ladies and gentlemen, people of Islamabad, 
you know, are very healthy, very beautiful, very pretty too as well. <laughs> and there's this one person who actually looks after them. He's the DG Health Islamabad. He's none other than Dr. Hassan Uruj. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Good morning. Wa alaikum assalam. And very good morning to you and to viewers. And I'm very impressed by the languages you speak. <laughs> really? Is it beyond good morning? Yeah. <laughs> or it's, 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 it's all good morning. Yeah. That's, that's it. That, that's it. <laughs> right. And alongside Dr. Hassan, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we have been joined by a nutritionist herself. She's going yeah. to talk about what we need to do in winters, probably what kind of eating habits we need to have. She's none other than Dr. Noshin Abbas. Assalamu alaikum. How Assalamu are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you very much for Our joining pleasure. us. So let's get the conversation started. Mm -hmm. Smoke. So I, I think people are very confused what it is because initially when I saw it for the first time, I think it was previous year or the year before that, mm. I thought it was just fog and yeah. it will be fun to drive around in it. But <laughs> apparently it, it's not like that and it's dangerous for health too as well. What is it? So, uh, a very good question to start with. Let me just give you a background. Sure. Uh, the first time the word smoke was used in 1900 in London, okay. when the entire smoke blanketed the city. Yes. Okay. And that was because of the burning of the coal and the industries and, and definitely there were not much of vehicles and cars at that yeah, point yeah. in time. Right. And it was presented in 1905 by Henry Antonio, yeah. this concept of smoke. Smoke basically, as the word signifies, it is a combination of smoke and oh, fog. Right. And it is not simple fog, it, is, it, it comprises of chemicals. Mm. Um, basically, uh, when these chemicals are trapped yeah. into the lower zone of the atmosphere, stratosphere, this this uh, in, uh, in, uh, actually engulfs the entire region of the city mm. and that is a bit dangerous because mm. ozone layer when it goes at the upper part of the atmosphere right. it is actually protective okay. but the issue okay. starts when it engulfs mm. the immediate upper surroundings of the uh, human inhabitants the cities okay. and okay. and the region so uh, the, and, and this in that part of the, it, it is not only in Pakistan. Mm. This phenomena is also in Europe, in the United yeah. States, in Southeast Asia, definitely. Yeah. I think where there is industry, I think there is. Uh, it is related to it is related to emissions yeah. of chemical substances in the atmosphere. Okay. Yeah. Call it in the, uh, it, because it it may be because of industry, mm. vehicle emission. Okay. But for the cup, for the last couple of years, the phenomena has been that. There's a lot of burning of agriculture byproducts, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. and is it it is an air wind trap, because normally uh, it is being burned since decades and centu centuries because yeah. it is easy to burn them, mm. it is difficult to get rid of the waste. Yeah. So you know, take a matchbox and put on and burn them so that you should be prepared next time for a good agriculture product. Yeah, so saving uh, labor and saving money at the cost of so many mm. humans yeah, yeah, yeah. is not fair. That's right. um, so uh, it, normally what happens is with this huge burning phenomena in India or elsewhere, the wind uh, passes from countries to countries. Right. But right. normally with the climate change, the wind is getting trapped. Okay. It is not really uh, moving fast and it engulfs the cities and that is the phenomena it uh, gives to smokes. And it is comprised of nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide and chemicals which are injurious to health. So let's talk about that. Uh, I'm very sorry Shazam, yeah. uh, to barge in. So what kind of effects is it going to have for people who are actually living in a place where there's just where it is surrounded by smoke? Yeah. So what kind of effects can be witnessed? And for example, if they're out there and if they're going through it, so they might not know that, you know, I think that it's about time that we should actually go to the doctor. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, thing is that um, we all inhale. Yeah. Right. So what we are is because of our environment or what we eat. Yeah. So the smoke has, as I just mentioned, it is, uh, it is that is why a dietitian is here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, smoke, as I mentioned, it is chemical, uh, chemical in this atmosphere. So even <coughs> if it is a little chemical in the atmosphere, it is going through, uh, th th from your nose to your lungs, mm. yeah. through your throat. It is going, uh, it is entering your eyes. It is affecting your skin mm. and any, anything you can imagine. Mm. So um, the people who are most vulnerable just before, in the, uh, before coming to the studios, I was just sharing this, sure. are the one 
who inhale more. Mm. I'll give you an example. If I'm inhaling 16 breaths per minute and another person is inhaling 32 breaths per mm. minute, mm. so the atmospheric pollution is going more into that person's. Right. And, and who are these people? So you don't have to do jogging in, yeah. the, in the smog area or the smoking period. Yes. Uh, people who are asthmatic, <coughs> people who have uh, chronic lung diseases, okay. people, uh, adults, adults have, you know, uh, fast, rapid breathing, yeah. uh, old age, like 70, 70 plus, mm. and children also. Babies, yeah. Babies, they go out, they don't care what is going on, and they play, and you know, and they run fast, and while running, they smoke a lot. So these is, this is the vulnerable group. Okay. which is at high risk when the smoke is there. Well, but thank you for saying that. You mentioned that actually what we are comprised of is what, of what we inhale and what we eat. So Dr. Nasheen, coming to you. What do we eat in winter? Is it any different than summer or should it be? My mother cooks the same food every day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, of course, we, uh, we have the same uh, routine or the same menu every day, but yeah. we have to be a bit careful regarding mm -hmm. the intake of, especially when it comes to the winters, as uh, Dr. Hassan has mentioned, they, we are exposed to multiple uh, lung uh, diseases, yeah. like right. com from common cold till pneumonia, they're all uh, there. Right. So uh, what I would suggest when, when there's when in winters we need to consume, we have to be extra careful regarding the uh, diet. Okay. Uh, if we start from vegetables, okay. we need to consume green leafy vegetables such as spinach, uh, then we have uh, broccoli and uh, then uh, the, we should keep in mind that we have to uh, uh, be focused on the vegetables which keep you warm. Okay. Like so uh, we have spinach, beetroot, carrots, okay. uh, broccoli. So vegetables keep us warm too as well? Yes. I never knew this. Yes, Thank yes you. they do. They wow. provide you with the energy. Yeah, okay. cool. They provide you with the energy and they keep you warm. Wow. Uh, yes. And then, uh, then comes the fruits. We have to be careful in the, the intake of fruits also, uh, especially the we have uh, the oranges which are coming right, in. Right. The, the, the richest source of, as you mentioned, we have we are most in winters you actually come to see people who are developing vitamin C deficiency. Sure, right. So we have, uh, oranges are the main source which can fulfill that. Mm. Then we have guavas, then we have pomegranates, then there are a lot of fruits which helps you to uh, maintain your immunity. Okay. So the uh, vegetables we are taking, they help you keep your energy and the fruits we take, they help you build up your immunity. Mm. Okay. So you don't catch viral disease or anything yes, that's going that's on. Because uh, unfortunately, as uh, we have discussed in smog, there are multiple pollutants in the air. Yes. Yes. So yeah. when we inhale them, we are exposed to multiple diseases. Right, exactly. right. Okay, but so then I'll uh, yeah, yeah. just add one sure, thing. Sure, sure. When when winter comes, you know, can you imagine what is your uh, consumption of water? It's very less. I feel like it's very it suddenly religion. decreases. Right. Yeah, it does. So apart from the, what Dr. Nasheen has said, I will substantiate that. We all elderly, little ones, youngers, they they start taking water at least half or one third of the amount which you're taking which in really summers. Do. summers so you're taking the same amount of salt, you're taking the same amount of, uh, yeah, yeah, actually yeah. you eat more in winters, yeah. but you are taking less water. Water is life. Right. So just yesterday I met a person, he says, I'm having vertigo. I said, well, uh, how much water you are taking? Yeah. It's very simple. Hmm. So, you know, the, the, this is very important because less water means for elderly stroke. Okay. They might lead to stroke, oh it, heart, heart diseases because your blood get thick. So uh, this is a very important tip for the people, I think. It's such a basic thing and we tend to exactly. neglect it a lot, right? that's right. So Dr. Nasheen, so we've talked about immunity, we've talked about energy, but what about protein intake? Should we like, should we increase taking meat in the winter or should we not? Yes, we should increase our protein intake in the form of vi uh, white meat. White that's okay. uh, the fish, fish? is here. Right. Fish, fish is, I, I would it. recommend Same. if you, uh, uh, have fish almost on alternate days. You will see the difference in the uh, the, the there's a decrease in the for, uh, in the sickness also. Okay. Then you have to be focused on the intake of uh, like uh, try to avoid red meat. Okay. Red meat and uh, try to have chicken and you try to have uh, mutton or try to have fish. Fish is the richest source of omega-3 and omega-6 which is nowadays very common okay. and when you take this that uh, again helps you help develop your immunity. Okay. okay but the way we cook our food I don't think oh, that you know all of these omegas right. stay 
within the fish. Well, that's <laughs> that's the, that's. I think the, now there comes the role of awareness regarding the mothers' practices. The, yeah. the, the mothers are the ones who've been cooking the kitchen, or the, the cooks who are in the kitchen. So you need to tell them. You know, basically what we approach is that we need to have uh, something which is very oily and which is really either it's deep fried yeah. or it's. Or we can steam it. We can grill it. Mm. We can bake it. There are multiple ways of consuming uh, fish or meat or chicken in this way, rather than you know getting them deep fried or using a lot of oil and desi ghee that that, that destroys the the property of the meat also. yeah okay that's great but now moving on since you know every time when a nutritionist or a dietitian is actually going to be on the show they're going to let us know about vegetables and yeah. fruits and whatnot is there any kind of fast food which is good for health? <laughs> Please say yes. <laughs> any uh, kind of. Uh, Shazad will talk about it after the program. <laughs> okay, so there's no fast food, man. There's no space for fast food, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, since we are talking about food, you know, the only place we consume food is not our homes. I mean, we do go outside a yes, lot. Yes, you're yeah. so right. Yeah. So right. And you know, you cannot monitor that. The, uh, the income of the, you know, everything that we're eating. And, and so coming back to you, Dr. Yes, Hassan. Yes, please. please. One question, one. Dr. Hassan. I mean, this is excellent, uh, the type of diets but these are very expensive so for a common yeah. man uh, is there are there any cheaper source of omega-3 or uh, and other vitamins uh, alternate to fish and, yes you know? we have we can so use seeds also if if yeah, 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 seeds yeah. yes mm. right. uh, I'll tell you the richest source of seeds are the palm have you heard about sunflower seeds yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Suraj Makhi ke pool, right? and, and I even heard that there are uh, there are like there's certain quantity of protein in vegetables too as well yeah, yeah that's yes. right and then you can have chia seeds. These are they are the richest. Uh, the, mm. the, they are cheaper actually. If you're okay. trying to, we can have pumpkin seeds. Yeah. The, these are the seeds which are rich in omega three and omega six mm. both. So probably put the picture of the fish right in front of you uh, and eat the seeds. seeds. <laughs> oh, uh. Okay, well, that's great. But now, sir, coming coming down to where I wanted to talk about chronic illnesses related to our lungs. Because well, before you do that, I'm sorry okay. I have to cut you, but since we are on the food chapter, I need to ask mm. something. So you this are the <laughs> you are the DJ Health over here. Right. So do you? Um, we've talked about this before. But for everyone out there, do you have certain SOPs or do you monitor the food places that people go to? Because you're sort of making sure that people in Islamabad yeah. stay healthy, right? Yeah, as he just mentioned, that people of Islamabad are young and beautiful. <laughs> so I think some credit goes to the food department as Definitely. well. Yeah, they, 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 they are, there's a law which is known as pure food ordinance, okay. and we have food inspectors, mm -hmm. and there's, there's a protocol. Uh, there are two, three things which they do. One is inspection of the food premises. Okay. Uh, number one, inspection of the hygienic conditions, right. very basic right. things. Oh. I mean, you know, Pakistan is a developing country, and 60 to 70 percent of diseases, food or waterborne, typhoid, cholera, mm. hepatitis, they are yeah. water and food born. So uh, believe me, I mean, a lot of uh, people who are directly handling the food, selling them, don't know the uh, efficacy of cutting nails mm. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, awareness yeah. you know very important personal uh, hygiene personal hygiene mm. so uh, we can cut off about 80 percent of our diseases with the personal hygiene second is that we see uh, the place the environment is it hygienic to mm. make the food third is we collect samples okay. and send it to a laboratory for testing wow. so the, these are the three major steps mm. which we take while we and definitely there is a special magistrate uh, once the once we see there is no it, uh, the food is not properly uh, brought stored or served we mm. can serve them with a chalan okay, okay. and uh, that goes to the special magistrate the second is if the food sample is not up to the standard up to the na uh, uh, national standards mm. they are again served with a chalan okay. and thirdly if uh, like if we go and we see that uh, the conditions are so bad the restaurants have to be sealed. Yeah, yeah definitely. They have because to be sealed. No compromise and and exactly. God forbid, right. if we get to witness that, for example, we went somewhere to eat, and you know, if we th we thought that the food's not of that quality, can we call somebody or can we register our complaint? Actually, what we did was there's a number I'm going okay. to tell you. But what we did was we started putting complaint boxes within okay. the restaurants. Okay. okay. And the key for the lock of the complaint box was used to be with us, okay. not with the manager of the restaurant. Wow. So that every complaint he takes out <laughs> in the evening. So, and we used to uh, visit and take the complaints from, uh, open the box and take yeah. the complaints and then we used to do action. But okay. qu quite a large number of people are aware 
aware of this thing, but a huge majority doesn't know yes. right. uh, what you are asking. So the number is 9267580. 9267580, ladies and gentlemen, 9267580 is the hotline. God forbid if you went to a restaurant and the food wasn't up to the mark or you think that the quality wasn't right, you can call on this number and register your complaint. And but all just the food be, vendors out there, yeah. Dr. Hassan got his eyes on you. Yeah. <laughs> but just be careful, the food is not up to the mark, not your mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because a lot That's of very important. A lot of people complain that uh, because uh, we, when we dig in, right. the person misbehaved and actually okay. they started complaining. Mm. <laughs> okay, yeah. Is that, uh, so once again, please, if you can say the number again, please. 9267580. 9267580, ladies and gentlemen. 051 is the city code, 0092 probably. You do not need it because it's all about food in Pakistan. Pakistan. But with that, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, we're going to go head out for a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back and we'll be talking about chronic illnesses related to our lungs, pulmonary diseases. Yes, stay Let's tuned. Good morning. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for everybody who just got tuned into PTV World. You're watching World this morning alongside Shiza Hashmi and Shazad Khan. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have actually picked up on very relevant issues yes. because of the fact that, you know, we see that there was smoke in Lahore too as well. It engulfs uh, Punjab, uh, I, I think the entire province. Yes. And then they actually had to shut down a bit of industries and, you know, the brick manufacturing buttas too as well. I don't know what we call a butta in English, but it's perfectly all right. So I think it's a brick manufacturing unit. And because they were causing a lot of pollutants, they were adding a lot of pollutants to the air, which caused smoke, which is uh, fog and smoke itself, which is not good for health, for your lungs. And then we're even talking about what kind of diet we should be actually looking for. The, till now, what we have established is that we actually need vitamin C. Yeah. And in winter especially, there are vitamin deficiencies because we do not even get vitamin D because we're all covered up. Other than that, uh, Dr. Hassan Rulsa was actually letting us know about how to actually protect yourself from smog. I think these are the questions which we need to ask now. So before going on towards the chronic diseases or the wheezing and breathing difficulties, mm. how do we protect ourselves from smoke? Well, you know, I mean, <clears throat> life has to go on. Yeah. You cannot be at home. Yeah. Avoid as much as possible. Uh, try to try to have your, uh, you know, you have to avoid the end, uh, your contact with the, with, with the smog environment. Okay. And how would you do that? When you are at home, if you, are, if you don't have to go out, make sure doors and windows are closed, closed. Okay. Yeah, absolutely closed. Okay. When you have to go out, put on mask. Uh, I mean, if it is essential, definitely students have to go to schools, people yeah. have to go to office, you cannot uh, avoid that. So mask and as less as possible, travel time should be as less as possible. Okay. Glasses. <coughs> And avoid jogging and you know all these types of exercise. You have to alter your habits and daily life yeah. uh, lifestyle as long as the smoke is at its peak. Okay. Right, right. Uh, also, I think one should be and everyone should be an advocate not to burn things mm. at that in the yeah. atmosphere. 
because well, people usually, you know, what they do, even the litter that they produce at their home, exactly, they just collect it in a corner it's, and they burn it. This is very dangerous. Hmm. Believe me, this is very dangerous. Anything which is burned has hmm. chemicals, right? And it is adding to Especially your plastic. environment. Hmm. Yeah. And pl burning of plastic causes cancer. Hmm. And burning plastic within the population area is a crime. So what should we do? We shouldn't, you know, put it into the rivers or whatnot. We shouldn't burn it. What should we do? No, actually, the best thing is in in the cities like planned cities like Islamabad. I mean, don't hurry. Wait for the sanitation staff to come and pick that up. Yeah. And there is a dumping ground which mm -hmm. they take away from the city. Places in uh, but Pakistan is a very diverse country. I mean, uh, I mean, it, this could not be C D in Gujranwala or mm -hmm. maybe in uh, the Chichon ki Malia. So, so I mean, th th this is social responsibility yeah. of the responsible yeah. people in the society. They should, they, it, and it's not difficult. I mean, yeah. they can pool money or they can, one of them can volunteer every day as another person mm. to take the, uh, the waste uh, disposed of a little far from the, uh, fr fr from the residential, residential area. areas. Mm. In, uh, far from the residential areas, the be uh, there are incinerators available in the, okay. in, the, in the main cities as well. But far from the residential areas, they can be dumped they can be just left as it is yeah. or, or buried. Or buried. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Okay, but even other than that, you know, there's this one interesting thing which I've watched over the internet. So somewhere in Europe, what they've done is that they've actually put in machines. Mm. So what they do is that people actually gather all the plastic, mm. they go, they put they it put into the, the machine money. and after you put like two bottles of 1.5 litre, you get a euro. Right. So, right. so you know, people are just collecting bottles over there. That's these a good days incentive. Well. No? We need yeah. to give incentive right. to people. And, and you know. it is a great initiative to protect the environment. Exactly. And the individual responsibility also. Exactly. Then raise their but with that, what I want to ask you is, do you think that we have got that type of food over here, which actually helps us heal our body from all of these different problems which we face? Not exactly, but we are, what we again the uh, the discussion will come to a point where we need to have a balanced diet. Yeah. There is no nothing such as uh, uh, something which helps you heal. Yes, you can have like if you want to do certain remedies that you can do like have turmeric, a yeah. pinch of turmeric in a half glass of lukewarm uh, yeah. milk. It really helps you heal and it helps you build up your immunity. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. something everyone has at home. Exactly, as well, right? exactly. So it's, it's just that we don't. Uh, it's just that it's not tasty though. It's a, <laughs> you can right. add uh, a small uh, half teaspoon of honey you'll see the taste will uh, different yeah, yeah. it's well, very one, uh, no, yes. please sure please please go one ahead. more thing it's a little off track but i have to ask you this how much is too much dry fruit because it's winter how much of course. is too much dry fruit yeah wow. because you know it's winter of course everything you're doing if you're watching tv you're doing something on your laptop or even reading for your school you're continuously munching on probably penis or pistachios or whatnot and they're so addictive so is it because you had your exams and you were studying so whenever you're about to study you feel hungry i don't know why that goes because you're using your energy yeah, yeah. you've been using your brain your yeah. glucose levels and everything but yes uh, uh, what as a doctor i recommend is a handful of nuts each day handful not this That's way, not this way, yeah. this way, right. yeah, okay. Well, huh. My hands are big yeah, enough. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So yeah. when you'll do it, you'll get to know hardly you'll get six to eight almonds at a time. Which is sad. Uh, but that's the recommended, uh, you know, because uh, we have to be careful in the intake because it increases the cholesterol level also. Okay. Especially the walnuts, they have a high cholesterol level. Oh, so okay. uh, the people who are hypertensive or who have uh, heart diseases, and you know, they need to be careful. So we, as a nutritionist, I tell them a certain amount which is which is within the careful limits. Mm. So yes, you can eat uh, nuts as uh, indicated in this right. uh, winters but you have to be careful in the intake well i just feel like there's, there's so many of them dry fruits and they're made for us why shouldn't we consider <laughs> cashew nuts first of all you know i love them cashew nuts awesome. are, are, are my favorite exactly. too as well but i think that they they hamper your cholesterol levels too as well Eggs, they do. okay they but, but my producer over here is very adamant of the fact that he wants me to ask you that walnuts are actually good for people who are suffering from diabetes what Everything is good. I, I have okay. I didn't mention that nuts are bad for your health, did I? No, no, I did not. Yeah, yeah. I just said you have to be care careful while consuming. There is yeah. a certain amount which you can take. Again, the handful is the indication is in a level where you can take it and within the careful limits. Oh, and you also like very quickly you develop pimples on your face when you eat a lot of dry fruit. Why is that so? Uh, it depends upon how is the uh, basically you have seen this. This usually happens in the summers okay. or it happens in the when the season is changing. Right. The, both the times are when the of water intake has been uh, oh, affected. Okay. As Dr. Hassan mentioned that we really ignore the fact that water intake 
usually uh, as an adult we need to take at least at least 10 to 12 glasses of water yeah, right. and if you ask any ordinary individual he'll not even he or she will not even remember the how, mu how mm. much glasses they have taken in a day time with like mm. three to four glasses a day mm. that's the basic reason of developing well, no, that's actually true and it's so hard to keep you know a uh, track of how many glasses you've had so just to make an incentive what my mother does is just put a sort of a table or a chart behind the kitchen door yeah. and every time like by the end of the day she sees who drank the most glasses of water. <laughs> that's and then you probably that's get something, which is right, good, exactly. right? Exactly. That's 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 mother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or you can have a bottle or something, which can really, you know, you can keep a target mm. of taking two bottles a day, a little right. a bottle. That also helps you to maintain your water. Exactly. But very quickly, let's uh, bust a bit. Two ladies and gentlemen, while we were on break, so we were discussing about bananas, mm. that, you know, bananas actually make us lean. Yes. And we never knew this fact. And I was avoiding bananas for all of this time because of the fact because that I was told that I'm going to get fat. Oh God. So over here uh, we are going to bust a myth. Go <laughs> yes. ahead, please. Yes, shoot. please. Yeah. Bananas. Are, uh, you should have banana. Uh, if it's a bigger in size, you can half of it. And if it's a smaller in size, do take one banana a day. And you know what? What uh, the question you asked uh, while in the break that yeah. muscle spasm. Yeah. Mm. It because uh, we already on low intake of water. So mm. what we uh, it has the banana has a lot of minerals like potassium. They also have potassium also. Mm. So they uh, are very helpful in overcoming the muscle spasm and. Uh, even if you are, if as a in my practice, often seen kids coming to me and uh, complaining that they have pain in legs or they get up in the middle of night saying uh, they, they they have uh, severe cramps in their legs. So do use bananas in your kids' diet. Oh. And as an adult, you can also have bananas. Potassium is so important that I've seen patients with uh, hypokalemic periodic paralysis. Mm. Literally, the uh, less potassium in the body may lead to complete paralysis, okay. but but it is it is reversible. Okay. Once you give potassium, exactly. So, so banana keeps it away. Keeps I mean, it away. Wow. Yeah. As and the apple keeps available. the doctor yeah. away, the it banana is. keeps Parali paralysis away. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Paralysis. But with that, well, just one thing. Yeah, yeah, that, the best food. One of the best food is physical exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm. It's mental food. It's spiritual food. It's body food. Yeah. yeah. But Absolutely. not during smoke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a catch here. <laughs> and, uh, but even though, I mean, you can walk within your house. Within yeah. house. I mean, it is said that if you walk 100 steps in a minute and you, you, uh, you walk for about 30 minutes, yeah. it, is in, it is enough. It is enough though. 100 so steps a minute. 3,000 steps. Uh, that's right. 3,000 yeah. 3, steps, yeah. steps a minute. Okay. Right. So, okay. And, the, and the speed, this is the quantity, 3,000, and the speed is 100 steps per minute. Wow, that's good. Well, and also, Dr. Noshin, one more thing I remember my mom telling me, all of us actually, <laughs> that right after you're done with your food, um, don't I drink mean, water. No, yes, no, that is but don't but drink you water. At least walk. At least walk forty steps. Is that? Is that's that sonar too as well. Well, yeah, the, the, right. the, this is recommended. Of course, you know when you eat, you need to digest it all before going to the bed. Right. So the yes, she's right. This is not a myth. This, this, this yeah. is practical. This is practical. Yeah. That you should walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've often seen that uh, as a doctor or as a nutritionist, you prescribe patients that are, uh, go for a brisk walk or try to walk after having meal. Don't go to bed directly after having yeah, yeah. meals. Okay. Yeah. So yes. You get weird dreams, I don't know, when, when you eat and sleep, you know, you, I don't know how the brain I works. I dream of food. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would just add to what sure, the sure, machine sure, has said that food in this country is especially, this topic is so important because everything we have is fried, yeah. everything is overcooked, Yes. everything, we have three, four meals a day. Mm. So, and you know, we have the one of the highest number of diabetics and hypertensives and issues. heart diseases in this country. Wow. Yeah. I mean, th this is all what we eat. Exactly. We don't do exercise. We eat, and we just do. Uh, we don't just burn it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, and but I'm saying, you know, all yeah. these diseases and everything that we're facing, we actually sort of contribute to less than one percent of the total carbon emissions from the world. Yeah. And mm. this is where we are. Imagine if we do increase from that, where we're we going, man. No, it's not like that. It's just that that the developed countries do, uh, do not even come forward to sign all of these protocols. For example, Kyoto Protocol and these other protocols, mm -hmm. which are there to protect the environment and so you know I don't think that we can probably help them too as well or they can help we us can help ourselves. Mm. But, but what we can do is that we can actually tell people that there are these vaccines available these days and if you get a shot of that you might not even get flu you might oh, not yes. even, yeah so uh -huh. let's talk about that are they safe yeah yeah, yeah. very safe okay um, highly recommend it no, but if you recommend that now what happens is that for example when we get flu the entire body changes the mucus of the body so don't you think that changing, getting the mucus changed is better or getting the vaccine shot is better? Wh which one is better? 
You know, as we just mentioned, our immunities are less. Okay. We are working on sub-minimal immunities, most of the people, because of our eating habits, non-exercise, impurities, environmental issues. So it's better to get flu shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you are very healthy, uh, extraordinarily healthy, you get a flu virus inside your body, it will take a while, three, four, four. it's a viral infection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, 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 it doesn't affect by antibiotics. There's no medic medications for it. So you will be you will be off road for about <laughs> three, four, five, six, yeah. seven days, whatever the incubation period of the virus <coughs> is. Yeah. Uh, but if you take a flu shot, that would avoid that. Okay. So I have a question, yeah. Doctor Hassan. Uh, what is the time when you should take a flu vaccine? Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Actually, uh, you see, when the weather changes, especially in September or August oh. or September, okay. that the, mm. the, the most ideal and appropriate time. But. Uh, Earlier the better, I mean, uh, even it's if you're late, to... get it. <laughs> yeah, and one more thing, and that is that, you know, ever since I was growing up and I will get flu or anything, so my mother will be like, okay, you know, what you need to do is probably go and take some steam. Mm -hmm. So how do you think that steam works for us? Yeah, uh, actually, this is this is very important and very simple again, yeah. like drinking water in winters. Yeah. Uh, you know, our lungs, what we inhale, uh, it, it, it makes the mucosa, the pipeline dry. Okay. Mm. So, and also when it is dry, the germs, the bacteria and the viruses st start sticking there. Okay. When you take steam, actually, they become more hyperactive. The cilia become hyperactive. Okay. Mm. And they are not so sedentary okay. because they get temperature. There's a temperature with the steam which is going on. Mm. Okay. They are wet. They work more. And also they work as a sort of some sort of an antibiotic as well All right. you know and uh, whatever um, expectorations are there they j just get out All right. with the steam so right. steam i was about to recommend thank you for asking no me problem. i mean it is it is very uh, very simple and very good way of uh, you know swana baths yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all mm -hmm. steam mm -hmm. exactly right. just take a bucket of water and mm -hmm. just put it in next to your bedroom or mm -hmm. whoever is elderly or yeah. heaters probably because everybody's going to use heaters these days too just as well so i think right. putting heaters a water bottle i would really avoid okay heaters are dangerous you know with this gas and uh, mm -hmm. they are latest heaters which which yeah. uh, which are protective mm -hmm. But still, you know, not very good. Not very good. Well, so not before good. we close this, just one very quick, a quick thing, because everyone, a lot of people are prone to this uh, in this season, especially. Mm -hmm. So if someone develops a pulmonary attack, I mean, if the cough go gets out of control, what is the first aid that they should do? A first aid for yeah. cough? Yeah, I mean, if, it break, if it's out of control, if it, you know, if it's a cough. We have to see the, the cause of cough. Okay. okay. So if it is, if they are allergic to pollen or dust, hmm. so they have to be cognizant that they, they don't, they have to avoid that. Oh. Allergy means avoidance. Hmm. Don't go to the lawn, don't hmm. uh, smell the flower, don't use that clothes. Just keep away, uh, keep yourself away when it is dusting is going on. Okay. There are mites. Uh, maybe somebody could be allergic to the uh, to the pets. Mm, uh, right. So 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 avoidance is number one. Okay. Second, definitely you have to take anti-allergics, but with the advice of the doctor, okay. because they are sedatives. You have to be careful while driving, mm. while operating machinery. Yeah. And the third thing is cough syrups are there, but personally, I I I feel that we should not suppress the cough. Mm. We should know the cause. We were talking of COPD yeah, maybe yeah, in yeah. another program. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because of the short of, of time exactly. and smoking also, you know, <laughs> smoking has to be stopped. Okay. okay. Thank you very much for being Thank with us. It was lovely to have you. Thank you, you so uh, much. If, if you want to give a quick tip, you've got like 15 seconds to do it. Please go ahead. Uh, please f focus on your diet because in winters you are ex exposed to so many allergens. So let's add uh, soups to your diet, add uh, uh, fish to your diet, add uh, vegetables to your diet. And as you know, well, you are what you eat, so eat healthy. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much so for being with us. So focus on your prevention hmm. and lifestyles. Exactly. And it is important too Absolutely. as well. And this is what I say, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, going to the gym or exercising needs to be your lifestyle. It's not that you go for two months, three months, get in shape hmm. and then leave it. So exercise needs to be as regular as your food is. And they very famously say that you need to take food as medicine. Otherwise, you'll have to take medicine as food too as well. So mm -hmm. please make sure that you look after yourselves. You want to say something? Yeah, I mean, the face masks that we were discussing, you should wear it. I mean, everyone should. It's not just for your own safety, but for other people as well. Because yeah. there are viruses that you, when you sneeze and everything, so we 
people should not catch or that. probably if you are on television and you wear a mask you know off the set people won't even recognize you if it bothers you too <laughs> as well so ladies and gentlemen do write to us on our facebook fan page which is with the name of well this morning on twitter well this morning without a g on daily motion and youtube well this morning well this morning and this fabulous repeat is going to be at 5 past 11 the night till the next time 1 2 3 good, good morning, morning.